So, yeah, Ahmed, I'm actually going to ask you about um, when you first sourced your merchandise, my understanding is that you had an agreement with Guilt Group or Vaughn Privé to actually use their merchandise, or like to we sell the We actually had an agreement with Trendyol. Oh, you had an agreement with Trendyol. Um, did that help you scale with less startup capital? Uh, of course. Uh, this is an opportunity for me to thank Demet. Actually, very early on, uh, we sourced most of our products using the Trendyol platform. And this is how we come to know that people in the Middle East are actually much more interested in, in, in fashion looks and styles, much more so than they're interested in brand names. And today, on Marca VIP, if you see 60%, um, 50 to 60% of the brands that are on Marca VIP don't even exist in the Middle East to begin with. They're unknown in the Middle East. Um, uh, including, uh, we actually just featured uh, Trendyol's brands, uh, Mila and uh, what's the other one called? Uh, Modagram on Marca VIP last week, and they did really well. So people are very interested in the styles and the colors, and they might buy the guest watch, but they will complement it with a with a private label shirt that looks really nice, that would resemble like a Zara shirt or a Calvin Klein shirt. Uh, and, and that's where we're seeing the, 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 the market appetite is for. So that's why we focused very early on to make sure that we not only feature the latest and greatest brand names, but we are also a launch pad for brands that want to enter into this market, that don't know how to enter into this market because they don't know the values, the culture, the perceived value of their products, uh, uh, the, the, the pricing uh, uh, strategy, and they're using Marca VIP to launch their brands. If you look on Marca VIP today, you will see, in fact, that, as I mentioned, most of the brands don't even exist in the Middle East. Now, for the ones that do exist in the Middle East, we, we do have a, a, a sales team that's dedicated only to researching prices, both online and offline. So we put, before we put any item online, we make sure that we actually have the most competitive rate. The other thing, again, going back to perceived value, is that you might order something from Amazon or from Gilt or from, from net a but the, the, the inefficiency and the issues that you have to deal with to get your order, first of all, the shipping cost is very high. There is no COD option. You have to clear the products your own, so you have to go to the airport or deal with the clearing agent to clear it for you, and you have to pay additional fees. So if you end up ordering a dress or a camera or whatever it is that's $100 from some international site, by the time you receive it in the Middle East, in Jordan or in Lebanon or somewhere in the Gulf, you're actually paying 50 to 80% more. And the promise that Marca VIP gives is that the price that you see on the website is actually the final price that you will pay at the door. And that's, I th that's what I think our, our customers are investing in. They're investing in this convenience of knowing that they're going to get their product and knowing that if they have an issue with their product, they can actually return it. So, and, and there's no, again, there is no benchmarks. There's, there's no competitive landscape here. Uh, uh, there is nothing for our customers to compare these products with uh, because most of them are brands that are not existing in the Middle East to begin with. So we don't have a problem with that uh, as much as hyper-competitive markets do like in Turkey or, or in the States. Will you have, hello, hello, test, test. Will that be more of an issue if you enter the Turkish market or if Trendyol enters the MENA market? Well, we are preparing a welcome package for Trendyol. No. Uh, look, I mean, we realize that a lot of players will have to come into this region at some point. Uh, and uh, whether it's Trendyol or, I mean, guilt ships to the Middle East now, uh, we realize that, that uh, you know, competition is coming, but we're much more focused on fixing the basic issues of, again, cross-border transportation, logistics, payment, customer service. That's what we care about. No player will be able to, to make any serious gains uh, in this market unless they fix the basic issues. So we are working with the governments, the government agencies, uh, to try to facilitate for us the E-Trade. The, the e We're working very closely with Aramex to try to develop their systems as well as our systems to, to allow this convenience model uh, 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 to exist. And we're also very focused on hiring uh, uh, international talent to come and help mitigate a lot of these barriers to entry for us uh, 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 into this market. So by no means, we're not there yet, and no, uh, no competition will, will succeed if they don't solve the same exact problems that, that we're facing right now. My understanding is that cash on delivery is your biggest hurdle, and it could be the thing that makes or breaks Mark of VIP, especially in the Saudi market. Um, how are you tackling that this year? 
actually, we, we see COD as an opportunity. We don't see it as a barrier, as a, as a threat. Uh, because at the end of the day, I mean, if you look at the malls, they're on a COD model, right? They purchase products up front and then re they resell them. So what, what we're working on right now is actually working on an algorithm um, uh, that would do an order level risk analysis and a customer level risk analysis and a city level risk analysis. Once that customer places the order, we look at their history. We look at uh, uh, their lifetime value. We look at their return rates. We look at uh, w you know, what, the, what the possibility looks like for them not accepting the order and rejecting the order. So we're building all this intelligence and all these hooks within our application to be able to detect uh, uh, failure to deliver or logistics returns, if you will. And again, uh, Aramex is also helping on that uh, quite a bit. Um, so we are a fashion bank, if you will, right? I mean, we sell fashionable products. Uh, and we allow you to buy it uh, on cash on delivery basis and you don't have to take the risk of paying for it until it gets to your door. There is a risk associated with that, but we believe that once we solve this risk and once we mitigate this risk, we will have this intelligence that would enable us to grow much bigger and much faster. How do you put that intelligence to work? If that's like a heat map of risk when it comes to cash on delivery, do you start banning users or banning cities or reducing cash on delivery options in those areas? Sure. So once you, once you uh, on Marca VIP today, if you make uh, three returns or more, for example, uh, and you have no lifetime value whatsoever, then you automatically go on, on, uh, on a credit card only group. And if you want to get it out, if you want to get out of this credit card only group, you have to actually pay for the costs of the returns that, that you've incurred on the company. But that issue is, is not a big issue for us. I mean, to be quite honest, in the beginning, it was a huge issue. We had a 25% uh, logistics return rate. Uh, this is customers not going to uh, collect the, the order or not answering to Aramex's phone calls or, or our drivers are not able to locate them. Uh, but again, uh, having, having gone through this exercise over and over again for the past 18 months, we've, we've grew to, to learn a few things that if implemented properly can actually mitigate the risk down to just like a credit card business. The other thing, of course, that, that uh, we're doing, uh, which, which is extremely advantageous to us, is that we are uh, 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 signing exclusivities with all of our suppliers, and we're becoming the agents for a lot of these brands in the Middle East. And as a result, or in exchange for that, where we are marketing the brand for the, bra uh, marketing the, uh, the, brand for, uh, uh, for the supplier uh, and, and giving them exposure to 1.5 million people in, in a very exciting market, uh, is that we're getting uh, consignment deals, payment terms. So this reduces our cash flow cycle and also reduces our, our uh, positive inventory model uh, risks. Speaking of competition, Paul, your biggest competitors in the region, GoNabbit, uh, were acquired by Living Social this year. How does that affect your business? I think uh, overall the acquisition was excellent for the market. Um, I look at it as a benchmark and it proves that this market does have appetite for outside investors. Um, overall, we may be pitched as competitors, but uh, together we're actually growing the e-commerce space along with the people sitting here. Um, so I think it was excellent for the market. Are you looking for a similar exit? Are you looking for a similar exit? Uh, right now we've closed funding for 2012, so not actually looking for an exit. We're actually looking on growing the business further. You'll see some big transitions with the site quite soon, um, and we're growing quite quickly, so quite happy with that. 